This is me holding, hold it, hold it. filleting, and eating a scary venomous fish. The venom is inside those needles. And this is not me hunting it. Hi, I'm Yar. And I'm in Florida to learn about the lionfish, a terrifyingly beautiful creature that's actually destroying coral reefs in the Western Atlantic. It's what's known as an invasive species, meaning it's an invader that's not native to these waters. And it's basically eating everything that moves, including tons of helpful little fish that keep the coral reefs healthy. Oh my God, just ate that. Yes. And because the lionfish doesn't have any natural predators around here, its population has exploded over the past few decades. But conservationists have come up with a unique campaign to fight back, encouraging people to eat it. It's very tasty table fare. Today, there are lionfish festivals, lionfish cookbooks, lionfish hunting derbies, celebrity chef appearances, supermarket partnerships, and even battle slogans. By hunting and eating lionfish, so the argument goes, you are helping save the coral reef. But how did this invader get here? How do you cook and eat a venomous fish? And can you really eat them to beat them? To find out, we decided to go hunting for lionfish. Mm. So we are on our way. Lighting here is better. We are on our way to Isla Morada, also known as Isla Morada, also known as an island from Jurassic Park. That was Isla Nublar. This is Isla Sorna. That was a joke for you. That was terrible. To go out spearfishing for lionfish. We are almost there. We're here in Isla Morada, uh, trying to find our hotel. This feels like Jurassic Park, when the rain starts coming down and the T-Rex is unleashed into the wild. Over breakfast, I envisioned the glorious day ahead. Cut a sail. And then this is the water. These are my legs. They're long, like mermaid legs. Mermaids don't have legs. This is me, heroically spearfishing a lionfish. And here's the sun, it's blue. You literally had yellow. Okay, so I obviously had no concept of spearfishing, but that's okay. We met up with two people that do. Hey guys. Hey Yara. That's Eric and that's Jack. Wait for like five seconds. Eric's been hunting lionfish for over a decade. So he and Jack were gonna take us along on their charter, AKA boat, to show us how it's done. I am now boarding the charter. Oh God, that's probably not a good, there we go. So, uh, where are we heading out? We are heading out to one of my extra special secret spots. We've struck something with the anchor. Have they legalized the hunting of this fish? Yes, every single other fish that's legal to fish, there's regulations. Lionfish is open all the time, no regulations, go get them. And they're doing that essentially to control the populations. There's not much else we can do. You can't catch them hooking lines because they don't bite. You have to go down there and spear them. They like to be on structure and they don't move. They cling to things. They cling to things and then they'll eat everything there. But how exactly are these fish such efficient killers? Let me explain. Or better yet, let's have the Planet Earth guy explain. In the coral reefs off the Florida coast, there is a thriving ecosystem of fish, big and small. But there is one creature that does not belong, the lionfish. Its hypnotizing spines are full of venom, but that's not what it uses to hunt its lunch. Instead, the lionfish slowly stalks its prey. Then, without a moment to spare, it strikes. The lionfish will eat anything it can stretch its mouth around, including other lionfish, if it comes to that. Its stomach can fit more than 30 times. <coughs> okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. Lionfish are actually native to the Indo-Pacific, where natural predators help keep their populations in check. But as for how they got here, it's hard to know for sure. The leading theory is that some aquarium owners dump these exotic pets into the ocean. Another story says a giant hotel accidentally emptied its aquarium into the sea. Whatever it may have been, lionfish were first spotted off the Atlantic coast back in the mid-1980s. It wasn't a big deal initially, but because they have no natural predators here, their population multiplied rapidly, and soon they were being spotted all over the place. I mean, female lionfish can release more than two million eggs per year. Jeez. Now, not all non-native species obliterate ecosystems, but the lionfish does, which is why scientists call it invasive. It systematically wipes out local prey and predators, and it's reduced some native fish populations by as much as 
and some of these fish are crucial to the health of the coral reef, like the ones that eat excess algae, allowing enough sunlight and oxygen to reach the corals. Coral reefs are vital on so many levels. They host the highest density of species of any underwater ecosystem, and they even help protect us humans from floods and storm surges. So if they shrink or disappear, environmental disasters could get much worse. All that destruction because of this colorful, spiky fish. So we're back on the boat and ready to hunt lionfish. Eric, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. What is this device you have <laughs> in your hand? This is our high-tech lionfish slayer. And all it is is a three-barb holster. Put it in the crook of your hand like this. You reach down, pop. Dang, wait, can you do that again? Yeah. You push a button and you do it? No, you just reach down, you grab oh. it, you go up to the lionfish, and you let it go. So I don't have a scuba license, which is okay, but that means I can't go spear fishing with them. But what I can do is snorkel. Hold on, I'm just gonna go a little slowly. Holy mother, it's, it's cold. It is cold. This is excellent. I'm so good at this. Where are these guys? Front, that way, that way. Oh god, okay. All right. Well, this snorkeling gear isn't working the best. <laughs> but, uh, I think I swallowed quite a bit of water. <laughs> well, I'm gonna find them with this GoPro. Okay. I cannot see them, but I believe they may be spearfishing the lionfish. Turned out our divers weren't having very much luck down there. Rough weather had made for murky waters. So did you guys find anything? We did. The visibility is too bad. But little did we know, deep below the surface, on his third dive, Eric struck the lionfish jackpot. Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he wasted no time in spearing them. We slayed him. Wow. Yeah, buddy. We got a haul here. We got the big one. If they flop. Holy mother. Okay. The question I have is how venomous are these things right now? Oh, they're venomous four days from now. So we put yeah. them on. Jack, you have been stung before. Where'd you get stung? In the hand. It's usually always in the hand. So what happened to your hand? It swells up big enough you can't even make a fist for a couple days. It just is insanely, insanely painful. They're like hypodermic needles. When this thing dies, yeah. that venom stays in these spots. Holy crap. Oh my gosh! It just ate that. They found up to 50 fish like this in one stomach. Jeez, they have like voracious appetites. Voracious. If you're a certified diver, then you're coming to the Keys. This is a fun activity. You know, we'll go out, we'll spear them, we take them to the local restaurant, they'll prepare it for you. And you get to help the reefs out by getting these things out of there and fill your belly up at the same time. So who's winning here, humans or the lionfish? Well, scientists agree that completely eradicating the lionfish from these waters is impossible at this point. But studies have shown that hunting and removing enough of them can allow native fish populations to bounce back, at least temporarily. That's why conservationists have hosted tons of lionfish hunting derbies and led a campaign encouraging people to eat them and supermarkets to sell them. But how does one actually eat a venomous fish? We headed up the Florida coast to a town called The Land to meet with a chef who was going to teach us how to safely fillet and eat the lionfish. Hey, how are you guys? How are you? How's it going, man? Nice hey, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Everything's like the, super natural. The introduction is now natural. Yes, yeah, so now it's natural. <laughs> we didn't actually have to fake. Hari runs an award-winning restaurant called Cress. It's centered on the idea of sustainability, and eating the invasive lionfish is very much a part of that mission. Have you ever uh, eaten lionfish? I have never eaten lionfish. It looks, uh, it doesn't look friendly. Okay. So the venom for this lionfish lives in these spines. Let's Let's de-venomize it. So do you want to cut them off? You don't have to. No, no, you know what? Let's let's do it big boy style. First, we had to flay this thing. I'm holding venomous spikes yeah, in my are. hand. Yeah, you are, you are. <laughs> then, we pan roasted it. A little bit of salt, pepper. Yeah. This is the time to put the thyme. Yes. I love puns. Okay. Voila. Okay. Turn it over. Lemon, dry, white wine. Butter, and we also have a sauce now. Served with them some rice, some vegetables. Next up, some lionfish ceviche. Equal parts lime juice, lemon juice, orange juice. So zest means ginger, fresh garlic. You know, I'm from India, so I'm always sneaking ginger and garlic into everything. Kosher sauce, sugar, pepper, jalapeno. Shallots, go for it. 
extra virgin olive oil, coconut milk, cilantro. We're just gonna get the fish and put some fish in there. Just wanna submerge it all the way so the acid has a chance to do its thing. And that's ceviche. Then, some linefish cakes. I'm gonna smoke this whole carcass and pull the meat out. And we're gonna keep the spikes too. We leave everything in there. A little uh, alley smoker. Yep. But you smell it a little yeah. bit. Yeah, right? it smells like flavor. Just try to get the big chunks of meat that you can. Ooh, oh, I want to make one of those. Yeah, flatten it up a little bit. Nice. Tasty? Mm hmm It tastes very terrestrial. The sturdiness of it, you bite yeah. into it, there's a little more pushback. Ooh. Yeah, this is really good. That was it. Wow. That's really good. Does ceviche normally have coconut milk? No, but Hari's ceviche does. <laughs> the creaminess is being counterbalanced by the acid. We gotta give you some too. Did it turn out like it normally does? Delicious. You know, you, you look at something that's supposedly venomous and you think when you eat it, it's going to be astringent, it's going to be bitter because maybe I'm eating poison. But clearly we've left the toxin out. Right, it's just in the serving. spikes. It's just right. in the spikes. As you can very well see, this is a great, clean, white, flaky fish. It's got a natural sweetness and I think part of it comes from the fact that something's gonna taste like what it eats. So they eat the young of shellfish, snapper, grouper, what have you. So they're eating people food. You know, it's interesting. Humans are likely to blame for the lionfish problem. Now, it's up to humans to make sure the coral reefs survive. And human consumption can generate more demand for lionfish, which means more diving and more hunting. And maybe, in the future, there will be more efficient ways to remove lionfish, like this specialized lionfish trap, or this lionfish vacuum. Or maybe local predators will learn how to eat them. Life. Uh, finds a way. For now, if you want to help the coral reef and you eat meat, try some lionfish ceviche. You won't regret it. Hey guys, thanks for making it this far. Okay, two things. One, yes, I say holy mother a lot. And two, we actually did eat the lionfish cake. We just didn't film it. They were amazing. Anyway, if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Press that subscribe button. Is it here? Is it there? <laughs>